today's uh, topic is uh, the potentiometer that's a small apparatus uh, similar to the meter bridge apparatus uh, almost in many ways it is actually similar to the meter bridge apparatus now there are two parts in this it's a very big question it's a very big topic it usually carries eight marks uh, the maximum marks that's an essay real essay topic so carrying eight marks from 8 to 5 so there are two parts in this any one part only will be asked in the board exam and problems wise also in entrance examination problems wise also it's very important and most of all above both of them it's very very useful from the understanding point of view the real application of definitions can be really seen in this uh, topic so the first part is comparison of emfs of cells two cells are there so their emfs actually can be compared in this part so next is determination of internal resistance of a cell the cell has an internal any cell has an internal resistance that internal resistance uh, can be determined using the potentiometer now what is a potentiometer so that is actually the definition of the first potentiometer so this is the first simple definition related to the potentiometer now potentio from the name itself meter means a measuring device potential means potential difference actually so it's a device which is mainly used for measuring potential difference but in school that is in the 10th class I already have learned that voltmeter is really used to measure the potential difference and not just potential difference even the emf of a cell emf of a cell also is defined almost the same way as potential difference both def both the definitions are based on the law of conservation of energy in terms of work they are actually work done they have been defined potential difference as well as emf of cell so both actually can be measured really by using a voltmeter but a voltmeter actually draws a small amount of current when it is used for measuring the emf of a cell or potential difference across any part of a circuit from that part or from that cell it actually draws a small amount of current due to that reason the measured value will not be exactly equal to the real value so due to this a small error comes so that error actually will not be present here in a potentiometer it can measure the emf of a cell or potential difference across any part of a circuit without drawing any electric current so any voltmeter which can measure really without drawing any electric current does not exist so it is simply called as ideal voltmeter or perfect voltmeter if it does not draw any current but such a voltmeter it is not possible to construct so but a potentiometer acts as a real or acts as an exact ideal voltmeter so that's the importance of the potentiometer so that comes as the first part of the potentiometer simple definition will be coming and the second part of the potentiometer next part is very very important so principle of potentiometer simply called as principle of potentiometer or potentiometer principle now this is a very small principle which actually comes in this lesson only so in the previous topics we have seen that principle of meter bridge is nothing but wheatstone bridge principle actually it comes in the previous topic of meter bridge what is wheatstone bridge will bridge we have seen only under wheatstone bridge that principle is actually used in meter bridge though in construction the potentiometer is almost similar to wheatstone bridge the principle on which it is based upon is a very simple principle just observe here this is the diagram of the potentiometer principle or simply principle of potentiometer now it is a simple circuit now the principle now consider the circuit here now this is a very simple circuit a single loop circuit it consists of two cells of emfs e1 and e2 now the first cell the top cell of emf e1 it's trying to send current in the anti clockwise direction always current sent now imagine that e2 is absent so i'll just consider both the cells here now imagine that one cell is absent actually so this i'm just uh, adjusting the diagram later i'll keep it almost the same way now imagine that uh, the bottom cell is actually absent absent only the top cell is present this bottom cell is absent top cell emf e is present now where the cell sends a current so in the in this circuit a galvanometer is also actually shown galvanometer actually 
can detect the electric current or to some extent it can also measure electric current main use is to detect the electric current whether electric current is flowing anti clockwise or clockwise the direction also can be roughly known using the galvanometer imagine that only the top cell is present then this will be sending current in a direction from positive terminal to the negative terminal so that through the galvanometer current flows actually upwards that means in the circuit it's actually flows in the anti clockwise direction then the galvanometer shows a particular deflection it gets deflected in a particular direction only in two directions galvanometer actually pointer will be getting deflected so that that way galvanometer current can be actually detected by the galvanometer now imagine that the top cell is absent and the bottom cell is present that means top cell is absent bottom cell now bottom cell also sends current any cell sends current in a simple circuit in a direction from positive terminal to the negative terminal so now the said current sent by the bottom cell will be positive to negative means it flows in the clockwise direction that means downwards in the galvanometer downwards it flows that means in the opposite direction it is actually flowing earlier sent current sent by the top cell is actually anti clockwise now top cell being absent bottom cell being present it sends current in the clockwise direction so galvanometer shows a reverse deflection what if both the cells are present now if both the cells are of the same emf then both of them so both are present means now i'll just call the bottom cell as e1 and the top cell as e2 now if both the cells are present each cell tries to send its current in its own direction so top cell it tries to send current in the anti clockwise direction bottom cell tries to send current in the clockwise direction that means they are trying to send currents in the opposite directions due to this reason they are said to be connected oppositely just observe here both the positive terminals are connected together that means even both the negative terminals are also connected to together they are facing the same side or they are connected together then the cells are connected said to be connected oppositely then they are trying to send currents in the opposite direction now in what direction really current flows that depends upon the magnitude of the emf so supposing e1 is greater than e2 then e1 direction will be dominating the direction of e2 so current will be really flowing in the direction of as sent by the em e1 if e1 is greater that means even in what direction it sends current already we have seen it sends current in the clockwise direction then really current flows in the clockwise direction supposing e2 is greater than e1 then current really flows in the and e2 will be dominating e1 so current really will be flowing the net current the effective current in the circuit will be actually flowing in the as sent really sent by e2 that means in the anti clockwise direction it actually flows this way if e2 is greater than e1 now what if both the cells are of the same emf then both will be actually cancelling of their effects and the net current in the circuit will be zero galvanometer will show zero deflection so if the galvanometer in this circuit is showing zero deflection it means galvanometer current is zero automatically it means that e1 is equal to e2 now this we are seeing this is a simple form of the principle of the potentiometer this we are directly saying without big explanation now really this can be exactly proved using the definition of emf and the relation between the so based on the definition of emf and the relation between the electric field applied by the cell in a circuit now e1 actually applies it's sending current in the clockwise direction means really it applies an electric field in this circuit in the clockwise direction that electric field call it as capital e1 regular symbol for electric field is what capital e so call the electric field due to the first cell e1 as capital e it will be present in the clockwise direction now the same way electric field due to the second cell e2 it can be called as capital e2 it will present in the anti clockwise direction now both these fields electric field is a vector quantity so net field will be what at every point in both directions electric field two fields are present net field will be e1 minus e2 now this electric field can be very easily proved to be directly proportional to the emf so if both the cells are of the same emf then what happens is both the fields will be equal and opposite so they just cancel each other that means no current flows that's the reason so based on electric field very easily it can be this can be actually proved the principle of potentiometer or directly using kirchhoff's voltage law apply kirchhoff's voltage law the sum of all the pds in a closed circuit equal to zero using that also in just one step this can be actually proved anything can be found but the most powerful proofs are the proofs based on definitions or the fundamental laws 
So Kirchhoff's voltage law is very, very definitely very, very convenient law, but it's not a fundamental law. It is really derived from another fundamental law, the law of conservation of energy. So we have already seen this in the Kirchhoff's laws we have seen. But this proof using the definition of EMF and also the properties of electric field, it's a much more simpler proof. So this is, so finally the principle of potentiometer is very simple. So in this simple circuit consisting of two cells connected oppositely, if the deflection in the galvanometer happens to be zero, then both the cells are of exactly equal EMF. Then the circuit is said to be balanced. So or this is also called as simply potentiometer circuit. It's also called as simple, simple potentiometer. Then the simple potentiometer circuit is said to be balanced. It is simply said to be balanced, exactly like the meter bridge is balanced or Wishon bridge is balanced. When they are set to be balanced, then the current in the galvanometer is zero. The same way, this is the same word is used here. The potentiometer circuit is balanced automatically means that both the cells are of equal EMFs, which, which are actually connected oppositely. So that's the simple principle of the potentiometer. Now the actual, what is called as construction and working principle. So next part, the main part of the potentiometer experiment is the construction and the working principle. It is simply called as working principle. So it can also be called as working also, but it's almost like uh, the main principle of the potentiometer experiment. That's why it's called as working principle instead of just called instead of just uh, called as um, instead of uh, just the name working. It's called as working principle. So actually, the side heading construction and working principle. I've just made a small adjustment. Actually, it's uh, too congested. Actually, earlier. Actually, I wrote it on the left side of the diagram because uh, it's looking congested. I just adjusted the side heading a little earlier, a little upper. I made it a little uh, slightly above the diagram. This is much more convenient. So now, <clears throat> what does the real potentiometer look like? The real potentiometer actual circuit diagram exactly is this one. Now, there are two parts in the circuit diagram of the potentiometer. Really also it looks almost the same way, only with small adjustments uh, it can be understood more clearly in the next step itself. But the circuit diagram is very simple like this. There are two parts actually. One is the upper circuit, a big circuit it can be seen. Just observe the cursor compulsorily. One is this big circuit here that can be seen here and the other is a small circuit. Now this big circuit here, it's simply called as the primary circuit. This is simply called as the primary circuit and the small circuit here a circuit so actual spelling is c-a-r-c-u-i-t is pronounced as circuit or circuit anyway it can be pronounced but writing circuit is easier ckt is much more easier so this is a small circuit this small circuit is simply called as secondary circuit so that is what is important here the secondary circuit is the real circuit which actually uses the principle of potentiometer now, firstly, considering the primary circuit. Now, primary circuit, it mainly consists of a long uniform resistance wire AC. Exactly the same resistance wire AC like in the meter bridge experiment. In the meter bridge experiment, the meter bridge wire, it's also called as bridge wire. The uniform bridge wire or the meter bridge wire AC, its length is 1 meter. That's why it's called as, that device was called as meter bridge. But here, the length 1 meter is actually not sufficient. So to measure the EMF or potential difference very, very accurately, the length of the resistor, uniform resistance wire is taken to be from, it will be ranging from 5 meters to 10 meters. So it's very, very long. But still, the wooden board that is used here for fixing the wire AC is 1 meter only is used. On 1 meter wooden board, how can 5 meters length wire be fixed? That's very simple. In the next step, it can be understood more clearly. It is very simple. So, how can 5 meters long resistance wire be used? So, it is very simple like this. The wooden board actually, it's uh, I have drawn here. This is the wooden board. Actually, the wooden board will not be like this. The wooden board will be 1 meter. It's a rect long rectangular wooden board like this, 1 meter. The length will be from here to here. And breadth will be only 1 third of a meter or 1 fourth, 25 centimeters or so. But here it's uh, almost shown as a square. It's not looking like a rectangle just for the sake of diagram. So. <clears throat> the reason is all the this here you see 
one 5 meters long wire is required AC. So that 5 meters long wire is constructed from 5 separate 1 meter long wires. Now this is first 1 meter long wire, next second wire, third wire, fourth wire, fifth wire. Now they appear to be connected parallel, they appear to be connected parallel but really they are not connected parallelly but they are actually connected in series. How? Just see here, all these 5 1 meter long wires are fixed onto the wooden board this way exactly arranged parallel to each other now they are joined here you see the right end of the first one meter long wire is actually connected to the next end of the second wire so that current when it is flowing from first one meter first wire to the second wire it flows in the same path it's not dividing so what is happening is when current whenever current has a single path all the components are set to be connected in series so current is same means it's series so first and second are really in series now just see here the left end of the so next what is done is the left end of the second wire is connected to the next end of the third wire so still the current is going along the same path you see by means of a metal strip again a brass strip is used here brass or copper strip is wide brass or copper strip is used so that its resistance will be almost zero it look it acts as a single point with a single potential just as we have seen in the meter bridge experiment so next again the next end of the third wire is connected to the first end of the fourth wire this way again same path current is flowing like that all the five wires are actually connected so the same way even 10 wires also can be constructed construct connected this way so finally the final and last end of the last wire is denoted as c that way the long resistance wire five meters long wire is simply known as ac like this it's simply known as ac that's how a real potentiometer wooden board it looks like this even this is also not the real one real potentiometer looks just like an ordinary rectangle like this just as a meter bridge wire and all these wires will be very very closely spaced that way if they are placed even 10 wires also can be arranged like this if they are so closely placed then the diagram will not be possible to understand that's why for the sake of showing all the strips everything this diagram is actually followed so this particular this is the really how really a potentiometer board will be looking like 10 wires will be there 5 to 10 usually it will not be even 5 10 wires will be there for the sake of accuracy so here in the diagram for the sake of simplicity actually usually in the textbooks about 5 wires are actually shown so this entire thing i am just removing it see here the real diagram i am just removing it just remember it for the sake of understanding i have drawn here so this is about the potentiometer wire so that entire potentiometer wire here in the circuit diagram is simply it simply is shown in a simple manner as a single long wire so that's the potentiometer wire ac arranged on the wooden board as we have seen in the next diagram so now here to the two ends of the potentiometer wire ac that is the resistance wire ac what is done is a battery of emf e0 it's of considerable value it's not just one volt or two volts or three volts it's much higher volt, considerable voltage it will be having, considerable value of EMF it will be having, denoted as E0, maybe 10 volts or 20, 12 volts like that. A plug key K and a rheostat RH. Rheostat is nothing but a variable resistor. Its resistance will be varying from 0 to some 1000 ohms like that or 10,000 ohms. Any value can be used as per requirement. Continuously it will be varying. 0, 1, 2, not even 0, 1, 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, like that. Continuously it can be varied. That way it's constructed, a rheostat. Later you will be seeing this in the lab. Now here it can be seen that a slider like thing is arranged, a moving slider, almost like the jockey of the meter bridge. Here also a jockey is, will be there, here even in the potentiometer jockey. J. I said already the circuit is almost similar to the meter bridge circuit or meter bridge circuit. So this is a slider, it's almost like a jockey of the meter bridge. So simply this is called a slider here. Now by moving this slider actually the resistance can be varied from 0 to max. By moving the slider rightwards or leftwards. The resistance in the circuit can be actually really increased or decreased continuously. So here the battery of EMF E0, the plucky K and the rheostat, all the three are connected in series across the two ends of the uniform resistance wire AC or the potentiometer resistance wire AC. Now this forms a closed circuit which itself is called as the primary circuit. Now what about the secondary circuit? Now secondary circuit is very simple. Now a battery of or a cell of EMF E, which is actually the unknown EMF, which has to be determined. Now, the important thing is this unknown cell of unknown EMF must be definitely less than the EMF E0 of the primary circuit. 
any cell, usually the regular natural cells which exist, they have EMFs about 1.52 volts, 1 point, Daniel cell 1.08 like that, like Lancia cell like that, their EMFs will be around 1 volt. Even the normal battery which we use uh, in a pen torch, etc. or a CD player, a small battery, a thin battery, it's about 1.5 or 1.49 volts. So, that's the regular value, that's the normal value of the EMF of cells which are available usually, which we use normally. So, that the thing here is, this cell of unknown EMF E must be definitely less than the EMF in the primary circuit. So, EMF in the primary circuit, that's why it's taken to be about 10 to 12 volts. So, that is much higher than most of the cells of available cells of EMF. So, <clears throat> so this is the... So, in the secondary, the main thing is the cell of unknown EMF will be present to which a galvanometer is connected in series and both are actually connected between the end A and a jockey J. End A of the potentiometer resistance wire and a jockey J. Already we have seen that in a meter bridge experiment, jockey J is nothing but an ordinary metal rod which is again made up of the same zero, almost zero resistance brass rod it's actually. One edge of the metal rod here, it will be a knife edge, a real knife edge. So that knife edge, its thickness, knife means the thickness will be almost zero. So that knife edge is actually pressed out at any point D on the potentiometer wire AC, just like the meter bridge wire AC, at any point D it's actually pressed up. That means it can be brought into contact at any point at the, towards the left end A or towards the right end C or somewhere in the middle of the potentiometer wire. So by moving this, what happens is, by moving this in the meter bridge experiment, we located the balancing point D. The same thing should be done here. So those who did not uh, attend the meter bridge, doesn't matter. First, you can listen to this. Following this, the same way meter bridge also can be understood. Those who already listened to the meter bridge, this will can be seen to be almost similar to that, to the meter bridge experiment. So that's about the, what is called as uh, the jockey J. I'm just removing the jockey J diagram. So this is the jockey J I am just removing. So the jockey J can be moved and pressed at any point D on the potentiometer wire. So once it is pressed at any point D, now you see that it is actually forming a closed circuit, another closed circuit. This itself is called as the secondary circuit. Now the important thing is, now initially let jockey J be just moved away from the at an, it let, did not be brought into contact on the potentiometer wire AC. So once it is not in contact with the potentiometer wire AC, the secondary circuit will be forming, will be becoming an open circuit. Open circuit means current cannot flow through it. Once the, when it is brought into contact at point D, it becomes a closed circuit. Then there will be a chance for current to flow. So now let it be open. That means J is not brought into contact at any point on the potentiometer wire. Now then only the earlier circuit can be closed if provided the key is closed. Now if the key is closed in the primary circuit then immediately from the positive terminal of the battery E0 current starts flowing. It flows from towards A and from A to C. Now we are just ignoring the secondary circuit because it is open circuit. No current can flow in it. So current flows towards A in the primary circuit and from A towards C and again from C towards the negative terminal of the battery E0 it will be flowing. So this way when current is flowing. So now current is flowing from, now just observe here, current is flowing from A to C. So A will act as positive terminal. I will just use a different color here. So A will be acting as positive terminal because it is connected, it is closer to the positive terminal of the battery, it will be at higher potential and C being closer to the negative terminal of the battery, it will be at lower potential. So this can be taken as and low, potential of this point C can be taken to be lower than potential of A. So this higher potential can be taken as positive, lower potential for convenience it can be taken as negative. So or we can take it to be any value lesser than this positive. So negative is clearly lesser, so that is much more convenient here. This way in this direction current is flowing. Now that is the important thing here. So now once a jockey is brought at any point, pressed at any point D on the bridge wire, then what is happening is current it's actually direction, it's natural direction is from A to D and D to C. So D is at lesser potential. 
so again compared to a this can be taken to be at lesser potential so this can be taken to be at negative potential so now imagining that current when it is flowing through from a to d the potential difference across ad is nothing but from ohm's law it's given by current through ad into resistance of ad that will give the potential difference from ohm's law across ad portion so now so current flows from a to d because it's flowing from a to d definitely a is at higher potential d is at lower potential so a can be taken as positive potential because it's higher and d can be taken as negative potential just for the sake of understanding because it's lower than a so now again imagine that j is not really in contact with the point d if it is in contact with the point d then the current through ad will be not only just produced by e not even e also will have its own effect on the current so current will be partly due to e not as well as e through ad definitely because both the cells will be acting in the two parts two parts of the circuit upper part that is primary and lower part that is secondary but so for that reason to avoid the complication we are just imagining that j is not really in contact with the point d then the current will be from a to d only due to e not now this way only primary circuit is actually considering we are now considering because j again we are just imagining that it's not in contact with d then there is a potential difference or potential drop across ad now this potential difference or potential drop across ad is simply known as vad it is simply known as vad v stands for potential difference ad we are considering the potential drop or potential difference across ad this we can easily find out using ohm's law if we know the current through ad that is current i into resistance of ad that's the potential difference now the important thing is this potential difference now again i'm just uh, drawing the same thing here if the positive and negative signs are actually not visible now i'm just uh, because the i have overwritten on that uh, positive and negative marks so i'll just put the positive and negative marks here so this is the jockey j which i think we should be actually in point contact with the point d now i just imagine that jockey is not in contact so this uh, point a is at higher potential positive d is at lower potential negative now what is the importance of this potential difference ad now this potential difference ad now will be really acting as another battery another cell how it can act as a battery or a cell the reason is only a battery or a cell can send some current through an external resistance supposing you have a battery across the two terminals of this battery e not we are connecting some bulb or a resistance this way just uh, i'll just use a so just like this so only for the sake of understanding i'll just re erase it again immediately you connect a resistor across this two terminals immediately the cell can send a current through this resistor we know all this because it forms a closed circuit so the cell emf is clearly it's visible e not that way because of its own emf e not it can sell send some current through it ignoring the internal resistance it can apply a potential difference across this external resistance which is equal to its emf so that's the thing which you have seen and we have seen four to five definitions of emf all these four to five of each and every definition has its own importance all the definitions of emf we have seen in this particular topic emf of a cell and terminal potential difference and internal resistance emf terminal potential difference and internal resistance of in that particular topic we have seen so <coughs> the emf of a cell is e not a means emf of a cell is also the in one particular definition we have seen and using ohm's law also we have seen emf of a cell is e not means that is really the maximum potential difference which it can apply that is really the maximum potential difference which it can apply now just see here this portion of the complete resistance wire ac potentiometer resistance wire ac a small portion ad we have taken now this portion you can act as a separator cell because it also can send its own current how it can send its own current now it is same way now just see here i am now considering another resistance wire this way which is connected across these two ends of ad ad we already know that it's at positive potential a is we know that we have its positive potential d is at negative potential when we connect another resistance across this immediately 
because this is higher potential this is lower potential immediately current starts flowing in this direction through this external through this new resistance connected across this way it is functioning exactly like a cell this way it's functioning exactly like a cell then what will be the emf of this imagine the, this <clears throat> ad portion which is behaving as a cell what is it what will be its emf that emf can be proved to be using one very simple definition of emf it can prove to be vad itself potential difference across ad itself how can the ad portion of the current carrying ac resistance wire how can the small portion small ad portion behave as a cell of emf exactly equal to vd itself the reason is the definition of emf now one very simple definition of emf we have seen was like this now i'll just so whatever yellow color lines extra lines i am drawing everything i'll just erasing immediately after the topic is over now these things yellow color extra lines which i am drawing extra drawing i am just uh, using is very very useful for understanding so this is the best way to understand by considering such real life situations using based on the definitions very very powerful definitions scientific definitions of different quantities here we are using the main quantity emf of a cell now one very simple definition of emf is like this now we are taking a cell like this so i'll just use the same you now this is actually a rough column so this is really important so i'm just uh, drawing a rough column here now take a cell of emf e across this cell connect an external resistance this way a cell also will be having its own internal resistance it can be taken as r also the current driven by the cell through the external resistance let it be known as i then the potential difference applied by the cell across the external resistance is simply called as terminal potential difference it is simply called as v term it's nothing but potential difference across the external resistance itself that's the definition of potential terminal potential difference basic definition so terminal potential difference so you have learnt about uh, different definitions of we have seen different definitions of emf so one particular definition very very powerful definition it's actually given in terms of ter terminal potential difference also in terms of this what is called as terminal potential difference also but every definition of emf is basically obtained from the law very powerful law of conservation of energy especially the very first definition of emf now just observe here terminal potential difference of a cell here is nothing but the potential difference across the external resistance so whatever things we are seeing here are simple no where any complication is there so i am trying to make the diagram as clear as possible because i am just using a very very small rough column because i don't want to spend more space for the reasoning because this is a very big question this is a very big topic so i am just putting terminal potential difference it's almost clear itself because i am pronouncing the word also v term t r m term so this thing but what v term it's nothing but potential difference across the external resistance so that's why it can also be called as v r terminal potential difference can also be called as v r later i'll make this more clearer while uh, taking the running notes while putting the running notes on the screen <clears throat> now this terminal potential difference basically it's simply given by so whatever things we are seeing here are simple no where any complication there so i'm just going there i'm taking more little more extra space here rough column again the same rough column so this is entirely rough column so what is the terminal potential difference it's nothing but potential difference across the external resistance so simply it's given by i into potential difference across the external resistance from ohm's law is what i into kepler like this but what is current here current is nothing but already we know the equation for current in the circuit it's nothing but emf divided by total resistance this we got directly from the this particular equation i is equal to emf divided by r plus r is directly obtained from the definition of emf and also using ohm's law also using the definition of emf and the law of conservation of energy and separately using ohm's law also this equation can be obtained i is equal to emf divided by r plus r so this way it can be written so now just observe here let the external resistance r be increased continuously it is increased then this part this factor r in the numerator also will be increasing even the denominator part also increases but when r is reaching almost tends to infinity that means when we are taking r values very very high almost equal to infinity then what happens is numerator is this part factor becomes infinity denominator is what now r plus r infinity plus r is nothing but again infinity 
so both the numerator and denominator will become equal they just get cancelled once they get cancelled what is happening is the terminal potential difference is coming to be equal to the emf so emf is equal to terminal potential difference but what is terminal potential difference definition it is nothing but potential difference applied across the external resistance now what is the external resistance now what is the external resistance here infinity so if we have an infinite resistance connected across the terminals of a cell across the two terminals of the cell the same resistance we are just imagining it to be infinite infinite resistance then the terminal potential difference which is nothing but potential difference applied across the infinite resistance itself is nothing but the emf so this is a very very powerful definition of emf this is almost the fifth definition of emf we have seen the definitions of emf are very 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 important not just here in almost every topic every lesson related to electricity not just in current electricity everywhere this will be useful so now <clears throat> this is a very very simple technique to find out the emf just imagining that an infinite resistance is connected across the terminals infinite resistance means automatically no current can will be flowing really strictly speaking infinite resistance means no current current will be what zero it will be this current in a cell is given by emf divided by total resistance consider this particular equation i is equal to only the small portion equation i is equal to e divided by r plus r when infinite resistance is considered current will become zero so but in that particular case what is happening is the potential difference applied by the cell across that infinite resistance we got this particular simple equation the potential difference terminal potential difference is nothing but potential difference applied by the cell across the infinite resistance that itself is the emf now just see here apply this here most powerful things in science and technology are definitions so here if we have an infinite resistance here if we connect any resistance what happens is this potential difference vad is able to send some current so this is acting as a small cell always vad will be lesser than e not this easily we can be proved from ohm's law so that but the small portion is acting as a small cell this means that its vad is lesser than e not means it's acting as a small cell but what will be its cmf means just imagining that infinite resistance is connected here infinite resistance means really no current will be flowing just imagine that it's we are just putting two wires here like this see here i'm just using the same yellow color so i just put uh, the same yellow color here so just uh, between this and this i'm just putting an infinite resistance infinite resistance means just uh, it's an open circuit air is present between these two points then no current will be flowing then across this infinite resistance how much potential difference it can apply that itself is the emf now but just see here this resistance and vad is nothing but potential difference across the resistance ad so resistance ad and whatever resistance we are connecting they are in parallel so they'll have same potential difference so when we connect an infinite resistance here or almost infinite resistance they are in parallel so their potential differences will be equal because they are in parallel so if we have a very high resistance infinite resistance means best way to imagine is a very high resistance in infinite resistance means strictly it's an open circuit so it's difficult to imagine so you just imagine that it's a very high resistance then they are in parallel so their potential difference will be equal so vad is equal to this potential difference vad is equal to this potential difference across the infinite resistance because they are in parallel so the potential difference applied across the infinite resistance is nothing but vad that itself nothing but emf so vad here is really acting as an emf really acting as an emf so now consider this circuit secondary circuit so this is an emf this is a positive terminal this is a positive terminal i'm putting showing it clearly and this is a negative terminal of this particular small cell of emf vad now just see this cell this first circuit now first cell is vad second cell is emf and galvanometer so that is what is what principle of potentiometer just remember this in the principle of potentiometer in the simple closed circuit we have consider very very simple things no where anything is complicated now again coming back to the same diagram i am making the diagram as simple as we have seen earlier so here actually i have drawn an electric field that i have removed now any doubt is there you have to really put an electric field because that's the real way of understanding using electric field almost anything related to electric circuits can be understood just the same way as static electricity so now in a potentiometer circuit simple potentiometer circuit if the both the cells or of equal emf then the galvanometer is current is zero then the potentiometer is said to be balanced that's the principle of potentiometer to use the principle of potentiometer we should re we require two cells in such a way that they both their positive terminals are connected and negative terminals are connected together in between a galvanometer that's the simple potentiometer circuit the secondary circuit acts as the actual potentiometer principle circuit 
Now this is the first cell. So first cell is the bottom cell. Just see here E1. Top cell is the second cell. So which is the secondary circuit? Just see. The first cell is the unknown EMF E, and which is the second cell? Top cell VAD is the second cell. That's the main thing here. So this is really a potentiometer circuit. Principle of potentiometer circuit. Very simple. Single loop circuit consisting of two cells of EMF E and VAD. VAD. VAD is what? The second cell. E is what? E1. VAD is what? E2. And the galvanometer. So once the jockey is brought into contact D, this really forms what? A secondary circuit really forms the very, very simple principle of potentiometer circuit. So now I'll just remove all the yellow color is not disturbing much. So you are seeing the actual video mostly on the cell phone. So yellow will not be much visible. So it will not be disturbing the diagram. Anyhow, later I'll remove this while taking the running notes. So whatever things we are seeing here are simple. Nowhere any complications there. Everything, each and everything we are obtaining from the definitions. Most powerful things in science and technology are the definitions. So that's the thing. So now what is done is the jockey firstly. So whatever things here, nowhere any complication is there. Now firstly I am considering the jockey. Just here, observe here. So in the actual experiment, so this is a complete construction and almost the main part of the theory or the working principle main part what we have seen. So this is how it's acting as the secondary circuit is acting as a very simple potentiometer circuit which we have already seen here. Observe the cursor compulsorily. Now what is the actual real working? How to find out this unknown EMF, the cell whose EMF is unknown. Now observe one more thing here. This is the positive terminal of VAD which is acting as a battery which is acting as a cell. So this is the positive terminal, this is the negative terminal. Both the positive terminals of E1, E is acting as E1, VAD is acting as E2. So both their positive terminals, it can be seen that they are connected and both their negative terminals are connected together. So that's also, it can be seen that it's satisfying this particular, di particular diagram in each and every way. Now what is done is, initially it is actually, it is very difficult to get a, a point D such that VAD is equal to E. In order to get that, a simple procedure is followed. In order to use the potentiometer principle, what is the important thing? The galvanometer current should be zero. That's possible only when E1 and E2. What is E1 here? E. What is E2 here? VAD. Both should be equal. But VAD depends upon the length, potential difference, always current into resistance. This is what? Current into resistance of AD. So, but resistance of AD depends upon the length of AD. If length AD is more, resistance is more, potential difference also will be more. That's possible only for a particular length AD only. That means for a particular point D only. But that point D we can't know directly. So we can get it by trial and error. Firstly, what is done is jockey J is brought into contact at a point very close to A. Very, very close to A. Then AD length will be very small, resistance will be very small. So VAD will be very, very small. So definitely E will be greater than VAD. That means E1 is greater than E2. That means it will not be balanced. So current will be flowing in the galvanometer in one particular direction. So gradually we have to move the jockey rightwards. As we move the jockey, so now one very important thing here is using the Kirchhoff's voltage law. What is the net EMF in the potentiometer circuit when it is unbalanced? In a simple potentiometer principle circuit, when it is unbalanced, what is the net EMF means? It will be bigger EMF minus smaller EMF. If E2 is bigger, it will be E2 minus E1. If E1 is bigger, it will be E1 minus E2. Very easily it can be proved using Kirchhoff's voltage law. By considering the algebraic sum of all the potential difference in a closed circuit is equal to zero. Using that, it can prove that the net EMF here will be really E1 minus E2 because they are directed, connected oppositely. Net EMF will be E1 minus. If they are connected in the same direction, for example, E1 and E2 are sending current in the same direction, then what happens is the net EMF can prove to be E1 plus E2. This very easily can prove from Kirchhoff's voltage. You can just check it later. It will not be difficult. Later, you can just check it. Okay, now again coming back here, there won't be any difficulty here. So later, if you have any doubt, later we can just see this again in the next topic. I'll just explain this. Now the thing is, the topic is actually very big. So very quickly, it should be completed as quickly as possible. Now almost the main theory is almost 90% of the theory is completed. Remaining part will be very simple. So <clears throat> as we are moving the jockey more and more away from AD, what is happening is initially E was greater than VAD. What is the net EMF means? E1 minus E2. It will be E minus VAD. As we are moving the jockey more and more away, that means the point of contact D is now more and more away from A, then the length AD is actually increasing, then VAD increases. So what is the net EMF in the secondary circuit? What is the net EMF? Already we have seen, net EMF is E1 minus E2, E minus VAD. So as 
D is made considered more and more away from A that by moving the jockey J, VAD is gradually increasing. So the net EMF now what happens? Difference decreases. As the net EMF decreases, the galvanometer deflection also will be decreasing. So current in the secondary circuit mainly depends upon the net EMF. Always in a simple circuit, the actual current value depends upon the EMF or the net EMF. So now what is happening is as the jockey is moved away, the net EMF because of increase in VAD, VAD is continuing. E is fixed here. So VAD is increasing means net EMF will be E minus VAD will be going on decreasing. The deflection in the galvanometer goes on decreasing. Finally, when J is moved to one particular position, it means we are considering one particular position D at which what happens is VAD becomes finally equal to E. And always uh, important thing is um, you might get a doubt. Uh, will that point be really present where VAD becomes equal to E? Really it will be present. Now reason for this is now, what will be the total potential difference? What is the maximum possible value of VAD when the length AD is maximum? When is the length maximum AD? When D coincides, when the jockey is brought into contact with C. That means D coincides with C. Then what will be the potential difference across AC, which is actually maximum value of VAD? That potential difference across AC will be almost equal to E0, ignoring the resistance of the rheostat and internal resistance. Ignoring the rheostat resistance and internal resistance, directly the potential difference applied by the cell across any external resistance just observe here the potential difference applied by a cell across any external resistance that is called as terminal potential difference we already seen that terminal potential difference will be slightly less than emf the reason is because of the internal resistance if the internal resistance is zero the terminal potential difference will be exactly equal to emf this we have seen in the definition of emf and definition of terminal potential difference using ohm's law we have seen applying ohm's law so ignoring the other resistance in the circuit Considering only the external resistance, only the external resistance which connected across the terminals, ignoring the internal resistance and any other resistance, that means rheostat resistance also we have to ignore. Then the potential difference across AC will be nothing but EMF E0. It will be nothing but EMF E0. So, what is the potential difference across AD when D is uh, close to A? That definitely will be lesser than the potential difference across AC, which is nothing but EMF E0. So, as we are moving D away and uh, more and more away from A, that means we are moving the jockey J more and more away from A, VAD goes on increasing and finally, finally, what maximum value it can reach? It can reach VAC, which is nothing but EM, E0. E, but how is E0? E0 is much greater than the unknown EMF E. So, we have seen, already taken that EMF E, unknown EMF E should be less than E0. So, always it will be much lesser than E0, not just less than. It will be around 2 or 3. Most of the natural cells or bat natural cells which are available in nature they have very small emf about 2 volts or so this emf is taken to be about 10 to 12 volts so definitely vad can reach finally 12 volts so on the way as we are moving jockey the equal potential vad at some point very close to a there itself it finally becomes equal to just 2 volts so that point what happens is the secondary circuit will be balanced when vad is equal to e that means e1 is equal to e2 the galvanometer current will become zero that way the balancing point d can be obtained that particular length is called as simply balancing length ad is simply called as balancing what is the symbol for balancing length already we know so previously we have taken the balancing length as l so this length will be much lesser than so vad is much lesser than vac that means this balancing length l will be much lesser than the total length of the that is uh, potentiometer total length call it as some l total length called as some capital l so this will be much lesser than the capital l here that way the balancing length can be obtained so once the balancing length is obtained very very important thing now is using the principle of potentiometer so we're just using what now principle of potentiometer using the principle of potentiometer the rough work here is very very important any doubt comes always the definitions will be helping us and the scientific loss or the fundamental loss of that lesson here in this lesson there are no only two fundamental laws are used but from the fundamental laws three laws we have seen one is basically ohm's law which is actually derived from the law of conservation of energy even kirchhoff's voltage law also we got from the law of conservation of energy and kirchhoff's current law from these three laws almost any question can be answered but more than three laws very powerful things are the definitions of the different five definitions of emf and the very simple definition of the terminal potential difference so now from the principle of potentiometer because it is balanced 
since it is balanced directly we can take that <coughs> so since as it is balanced directly we can take that e1 is equal to e2 so from the principle of a potentiometer because the secondary circuit is balanced that means galvanometer current is zero at the balancing point d directly we can take from the principle of potentiometer e1 is equal to just observe this diagram e1 is equal to e2 this is a simple just when balance means automatically e1 is equal to e2 so using that we directly we can get e1 is equal to e2 what is e1 here e what is e2 here vad that is very very important so e1 is equal to et e2 that is e is equal to vad now one very very important thing is because the resistance wire is uniform the resistance wire is uniform the greater the length the greater is the potential drop now a very very important constant related to the uniform resistance wire is the potential drop per one unit length so this also i'm just i'm just using a different color so which i'll be erasing so almost like a pencil diagram now you take unit length exactly one unit length say from here to here the potential drop per one unit length is simply called as phi it's a constant related to a particular potentiometer wire now this can be easily determined using simple ohm's law you can just try it it won't be complicated it can be proved that the potential drop per unit length of a uniform wire is fixed constant entirely depending upon the properties of the primary circuit or the components of the primary circuit it entirely depends upon the total resistance of the circuit the emf of the battery nothing more nothing else it will be depending upon total resistance of the circuit and the emf of the primary circuit so that's a constant a potential drop per unit length it is phi means so for two units length potential drop will be 2 phi for three units length, it is 3 phi but what is the potential drop per l units length it will be l phi so potential drop vad it's for l units length so this can also be written as what very simple manner it can be written as what vad potential drop per l units length it can be written as l phi so this is a very very simple equation so e is equal to vad is equal to l phi now by determining the balancing length l multiplying with the potential drop per unit length phi easily we can find out the unknown emf so no where any complication is there then how to find out the potential drop per unit length that's also not complicated it's very simple actually there is no much space here so i'll take a small space here is very easily can be determined so what is the potential drop per unit length so whatever things we are seeing here are very simple no where any complication is there so potential drop per unit length here is nothing but you take any potential difference across any length so we'll take the balancing length itself it is nothing but vad divided by l but what is vad it's nothing but from ohm's law current into resistance current into resistance so i'll i'll have to put a r here i'll have to put a r here but r can be written as what resistance can be written as rho into l by area of cross section it's simple rho into l divided by area of cross section divided by l here so then ll will get cancelled then it will be i rho by a and what is i here current in the primary circuit because there is no current in the secondary circuit because it's balanced so there is current only in the primary circuit what is the current in the primary circuit it can be substituted by the same formula which you have seen earlier so i'm not writing more steps see here it's very simple i'm just only giving the method yourself can try it so current in any circuit is nothing but emf divided by total resistance this formula can be used so in place of current here we can just put emf divided by total resistance what is the emf in the primary circuit e not divided by total resistance total resistance is nothing but rac plus rheostat plus internal resistance of the this particular cell so substituting all these things rac rheostat resistance whatever rheostat resistance is internal resistance substituting all these things emf divided by total resistance easily we can find out the current here so this entire thing now entire right hand side is expressed in terms of known things it is actually expressed in terms of known things now the important thing is ll is getting cancelled here so rho is constant area of cross section is constant emf e not is constant external resistance is what is external resistance rac plus rheostat plus internal resistance so emf divided by total resistance total resistance is external rac plus rheostat plus internal small r all things being constant phi can be proved to be a constant and substituting all these things phi can be exactly determined now this is one way of determining phi another way is very simply we can connect an emf a known emf here in the secondary circuit known emf here in the what is e here 
and non emf we connecting an non emf take l to other side we'll get deflection that is phi what is phi here potential drop per unit length so phi we can determine by e by l by connecting a non emf that is a simple practical technique by for determining this but practical techniques are very good but unless it is proved from some law much understanding will not be possible when both are combined it will be very very good experimental technique is very very good definitely theoretical knowledge when it is applied properly using proper laws the brain mind will become much more sharper that's the best way that's that to be the best scientific method of understanding a particular thing so this is the thing so phi can once phi is known very easily the unknown emf can be determined so this way this is simply called as equation 1 so now <clears throat> very simple thing is the first part of the see the side heading once quickly comparison of emf of cell how emf of two cells are connected now this is the after working principle this is about entire working principle what we have seen there is no big equations you see everything is based on definitions no where we have seen an equation directly we have seen direct one equation e is equal to vad directly following from the principle of what no big equations no big derivations all derivations here they have come only in the rough column only in the rough column so the main understanding of this experiment is based on the rough column only which need not be written in the exam only matter will be coming only just between this first diagram second diagram little matter little explanation will be coming the rules should be kept as simple as possible now the actual experiment that will be also nothing once the working principle is actually really forms 90% of the actual essay question understanding as well as writing also mainly mainly understanding now the actual part a comparison of emf it consists of only two steps what are the two steps they are similar to this equation result one which you have seen firstly what is done is the unknown cell of emf e1 is actually connected two cells cms have to be compared means we simply have to find out e1 by e2 firstly first cell e1 is connected and the balancing length l1 is determined so e1 is connected and the balancing length l1 is determined once because the secondary circuit is balanced again we can write e1 is equal to vad we can write but vad balancing length is what l1 so potential drop across length l1 is how much vad so potential drop per one unit length is what 5 for two units length is 25 l1 l1 units it is what l1 phi directly we can use this equation so this take is taken as equation 1 next the first cell is removed from the secondary circuit second cell is connected and the balancing length l2 is noted again because it's balanced when the second cell e2 is connected because the secondary circuit is balanced again we can use the principle of potentiometer e1 is equal to e2 e1 is equal to e2 means e1 is what the cell second cell which is connected what is the emf e2 it is we took it as e2 second cell so this cell lower cell so instead of calling e1 and e2 so e1 and e2 we are just calling in the principle of potentiometer that's the regular way of calling so instead of that we can call lower cell is equal to upper cell in the simple potentiometer principle circuit so lower cell is equal to upper cell will be that terminology will be better here because lower cell we are taking it as e2 so e1 is equal to e2 is little confusing so lower cell is equal lower emf is equal to upper emf so what is the lower emf here the second cell e2 what is the upper emf as usual vad so lower emf is equal to upper emf just see here there is no big understanding here very simple e2 is equal to vad now again potential drop across the vad is the potential drop across the length l what is the length l here balancing length l2 because it is the second cell so potential drop per unit length is what phi two units length it is 2 phi for l2 units it is what l2 phi So potential drop drop across AD that is L2 units is what now L2 phi. So this is the second equation. So in the comparison of EMFs, so I'm just keeping it's looking a little congested. Doesn't matter. I'll move this uh, diagram. This diagram is for the next part. I'll remove this diagram. I just copy paste this diagram in the next page. So whatever things we are seeing here are simple. No where any complication is there. So I'll do one thing. This entire diagram I just uh, copy paste it in the next page. So that I can just uh, remove it uh, quickly. Now again, coming back here.
so there is a sufficient space is available now on this page okay we got these two equations these two steps a little explanation will be coming here but that's nothing just two two lines will be coming now we require comparison comparison means we require the ratio divide the two e1 by e2 is equal to what l1 phi divided by l2 phi so what happens phi will be getting cancelled numerator phi denominator phi will be getting cancelled what is remaining is therefore e1 by e2 is equal to l1 by l2 so just by substituting the two balancing lengths l1 and l2 here we can find out the ratio of the two unknown ems so the method is very simple comparison of just see here there is nothing here just in two steps we got the answer so the main answer entire understanding depends only on the working principle so the entire understanding on which working principle is based on the very simple <coughs> definitions the definition of emf the terminal potential difference definition and ohm's law equation so using them anything can be understood here so this is the cancellation actually it's not very clear phi numerator phi denominator phi is getting cancelled so i've written it little above doesn't matter so later i adjust it when you are taking the running notes so this is about the comparison of emfs so method is very simple just see once again first we are selling connecting the first cell of unknown emf e1 in the secondary circuit any cell whose emf has to be determined has to be connected in the secondary circuit only primary circuit is never disturbed it will be just staying as it is so first e1 is connected in the secondary circuit balancing length l1 is noted next removing that cell e1 second cell e2 is connected here and the balancing length l2 is noted then using this formula e1 by e2 is equal to l1 by l2 the ratio of the two emfs can be determined that's the simple thing formula is also very simple derivation is just consisting of only two steps which is not different it's same as the main step of the working principle so next part of the experiment is also similar to this one very simple that is actually the finding out the <coughs> internal resistance of a cell this is also very simple so most of the things i'm just uh, so what is the next part of the experiment just see the side heading once again potentiometer first part already we have seen comparison of emfs of cell it's very small the same way determination of internal resistance also is also as small as the comparison not much different so what is the this part here the second part of the experiment it is simply called as determination of internal resistance what is simple for internal resistance of a cell smaller now what is done is a cell now this is the primary circuit primary circuit is never disturbed so i am not drawing the primary circuit also here this is the potentiometer resistance wire ac just see here potentiometer resistance wire ac so if you want to draw the diagram you can draw this entire thing this is the main cell e not next a plug key k next a rheostat all that will be there so that entire thing i am not drawing actually it need i later i'll remove this actually i should have drawn with the yellow color so diagram will not be disturbed doesn't matter it's simple this is a primary circuit which will never be using here so this is a secondary circuit so cell of unknown emf a cell of emf e is as usual connected in the secondary but the important thing is now its internal resistance is required that internal resistance how to find out so for that what is done is the first step is of connecting the cell in the secondary circuit as usual the emf should be less than e not that's a regular condition for the working of the potentiometer compulsory condition now what is done is as usual by moving the jockey from end a away from the end a towards the point c the exact balancing point d and the balancing length l is noted now this balancing length l is noted again as l1 here only for the cell single cell but it's still noted as l1 now because again it's balanced directly we can use the principle of potentiometer lower emf is equal to upper emf that is e1 is equal to e2 so e1 is what here e and what is e2 here what is e2 here vad so vad so vad is the potential drop or potential difference across the balancing complete length l1 for unit length what is the balancing length phi two units length 2 phi l1 units it is what l1 phi so l1 phi we are getting so this is the first equation next what is done is very simple so whatever things we are seeing here are simple no where any complication is there so after getting this uh, first balancing length once more the balancing length has to be determined so what is that balancing length second time that is also very simple now here for the same cell again the balancing length is a second time determined how it is determined that is very simple 
just observe here i'm just uh, moving the equations a little up so that sufficient space comes here sufficient uh, space is visible now just see here in order to find out the one more balancing length for the same cell what is done is to this cell now is there any current in the because once it's balanced will there be any current flowing in the secondary circuit no current flows galvanometer shows zero, zero deflection now what is done is an external resistance is connected to this in the form of a resistance box now the external resistance is connected across the terminals of the cell once it is connected to the terminals of the cell immediately the cell starts sending current through this now what is this circuit now this is the third circuit which is getting formed in the determination of the internal resistance so already we know primary circuit is there first circuit secondary circuit is there now there is a third circuit here that is formed here when the external resistance is connected now this circuit third circuit is exactly a very simple circuit which you have already seen a cell internal resistance and external resistance in the previous page we have seen that same thing here now what is the potential difference applied by the cell across the external resistance that potential difference is nothing but what called as terminal potential difference already we have seen this from the definition of terminal here again definitions are very important now this way with the terminal potential difference and with the current running through the external resistance now the jockey is actually moved again on the bridge that is on the potentiometer wire starting from the end a. and again the balancing length is determined that balancing length now it's called as l2 it is simply called as l2 with current running in the third circuit this current will not be disturbed the reason is this forms a separate circuit balancing length is obtained means automatically what does it mean in the secondary circuit in the galvanometer especially no current will be flowing but already there is some current in the primary circuit and in the third circuit also current is flowing but in the secondary circuit that is in the galvanometer and the jockey current will be zero because the secondary circuit is balanced and now what are the upper and lower emfs now the lower emf as usual it can be seen to be e and the upper emf as usual is vd now again as it is balanced so whatever things we are seeing here are simple so earlier it was balanced without the external resistance without the external resistance now again with the external resistance again the secondary circuit is balanced because it is balanced lower emf should be equal to the upper emf but what is the lower emf now apply the definition of emf what is the definition of emf it is the potential difference applied by cell across infinite resistance connected across its terminals now if we imagine now again use the, i'm just using now most powerful definitions in science and technology most powerful things in science and technology are the <coughs> science and technology or science and engineering are the definitions themselves so again that definition will be helping us to understand this so now imagine an infinite resistance connected across this infinite resistance means just air is the best example open circuit so if we have an infinite resistance connected across the terminals here when the third circuit current is running the potential difference applied by the cell across the internal resistance will be nothing but emf of the cell so will it be still same e no it will not be same e so what is the potential difference applied across this internal infinite resistance now just see the infinite resistance here this infinite resistance between these two terminals imaginary terminals we are just imagining an infinite resistance which is nothing but simple two wires with no contact between them air is present when through air current cannot flow current cannot flow means infinite resistance will be acting apply ohm's law what is resistance ohm's law r is equal to v by i when current is zero infinite resistance will be automatically resistance value will be infinity that way in open circuit resistance is taken as infinity really air does not have infinite resistance the reason is it has some finite resistance because a very high potential difference is up maintained current will be flowing but still its resistance will be coming to be very very large thousands of ohms it will be coming but still it will not be infinity but practically here because current is zero we can take it as infinite resistance now what is the potential difference across this infinite resistance infinite and external r they are in parallel so potential difference will be same so what is the potential difference across the infinite resistance v term v term that means the emf of the cell now is really v term itself because it is the potential difference across the infinite resistance so now because the cell is balanced here it simply means that lower emf in the secondary is equal to upper emf what is the lower emf it's not e it is v term so this is a very very important step in understanding of the determination of internal resistance so v term is equal to what lower emf lower emf means emf of the 
lower cell. So EMF of the lower cell is not EMF, no more EMF, E. It's not no, it's not uh, any more E as earlier because it's sending some current. It can't apply the entire EMF now across an infinite resistance. It can apply only V term that will be acting as the effective EMF. So lower EMF E1 is equal to upper EMF E2. Already we have seen lower EMF earlier situations it was E is equal to upper EMF VAD. Now it's not E, it is V term is equal to VAD. And what is VAD? Potential difference across the length L2, it is again L2 phi. This way we are getting. So this is the second equation. Now with the help of these two equations, internal resistance can be determined using a very simple formula. Internal resistance is simply given by some fraction into the external resistance R here, which is the resistance of the resistance box. This is a regular formula applicable in case of a simple circuit. We have seen this in case of, we have seen this particular formula near the definition of terminal, dif terminal potential difference also. How to find out internal resistance in terms of terminal potential difference and EMF. What is that? Formula, some fraction. This fraction will be very, very small compared to the total external resistance. It will be very much small, some 1 by 10, 1 by 100, it depends on the internal resistance. What is that fraction? It's very simple, V term divided by EMF minus V term. What is the reason? What is the derivation for this? Derivation comes in a very simple manner, very simple. Just I'll write this as small r is equal to, to derive this one, I'll just uh, multiply small r with capital R and again divide with capital R. So whatever things we are seeing here are simple, nowhere any complication is there. Now I'll multiply the numerator and denominator with small i, that is current in the circuit, whatever current that is flowing in the simple circuit. Just remember in the secondary circuit there is no current because deflection in the galvanometer is zero. So then what happens is this i small r divided by i capital R into external resistance. Now just see here we are getting a fraction here multiplying capital R. That fraction is already we have seen that it should be given by this. In the next step we will be getting the answer. So what is denominator here? I capital R, it's the terminal potential difference. That's the definition of terminal potential difference. See here, what is helping us is only definitions. They are only scientific definitions. Scientific definitions are the very, very simple to understand and they make even the most complicated things also very simple. So what is numerator? Potential difference across the internal distance. That's called as lost volts. And what is lost volts? We have seen that it's equal to EMF minus terminal potential difference. So that's what we are getting So into capital R. The proof is very simple. Now, so now <coughs> one small thing here, just check it once again. Why? What is the meaning of I into small r? It's nothing but potential difference from Ohm's law across the internal resistance. Now, this is also called as lost volts. Now, that lost volts itself is EMF minus terminal potential difference, E minus V term. So, this proof already we have seen in the topic EMF terminal potential difference and internal resistance, that particular topic of current electricity, some three or four classes back. You can just check that topic once any doubt is there and the denominator there is no doubt i into external resistance which is connected across the internal across the cell already this topic already we have seen this particular almost similar diagram we have seen in the working principle of the potentiometer so when an external resistance is connected across the terminals of a cell so there in the rough diagram i have drawn this diagram so only thing is above the cell external resistance is actually shown in the rough diagram. So that potential difference across the external resistance uh, itself is called as what? Terminal potential difference. Even here also we have seen that, that same thing here, the terminal potential. So there is no doubt here. So thus we are getting the complete proof of this particular equation, internal resistance given by this particular formula. So uh, here a small uh, mistake is there actually while writing, I have written the formula directly by almost like by Harding. The proof, there won't be any mistake because we are getting the proof from the last fixed law. The basic loss of the lesson especially the ohm's law and very simple algebraic i just manipulation here very simple thing so here a small mistake is there actually i have written that numerator by denominator as denominator by numerator so i'll just adjust this one just make a small adjustment so what is the numerator just check it emf minus terminal potential difference so this should be actually here emf minus terminal potential denominator should be only See here, terminal potential difference. Now, proof will not be any, there will not be any mistake. So, only while by hearting, some mistake can occur. So, but by hearting blindly is not actually good. Now, how to remember this uh, without uh, with least possible mistakes? It's simple. Now, the last words are the difference between which is actually equal to the EMF and terminal potential difference. Actually, it's a very, very small quantity. 
Now, how is the internal resistance of a cell? Actually, it will be usually, usually in general, the internal resistance is very much smaller than the external resistance. The external resistance usually we connect it as 10 ohms, 20 ohms. Internal resistance will be in less than 1 ohm, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, like that. So, this should be definitely R is should be very small, means this should be very small fraction. See, this small, this fraction is should be definitely it's very small. The reason is difference of EMF and terminal potential resistance is usually very, very small. Because the lost volts of cells in general will be very small unless the cell its life is completed lost volts will be very small so very small divided by terminal potential difference is as big as the emf it's as big as the emf so denominator being very large numerator being very small so fraction is very less that way this can be remembered so now the thing is this equation is the equation for internal resistance which will be helping us to find out the internal resistance call this equation as three now substitute already we got the emf from equation one just here l1 fine terms of the first balancing length l1 we got and terminal potential difference we got in terms of the second balancing length so that we got it as just a, a moment please so so in place of uh, v term we can substitute the equation 2 so what is the equation 2 we got the v term in terms of the second balancing length l2 that is as l25 we got v term so that can be substituted here and again the denominator v term again the same equation 2 can be substituted so purely e, emf v term now can be substituted in terms of the l1 just observe the cursor here l1 here and v term here l2 here so everything will be now in terms of the two balancing lengths so that's the next part so the step is very very simple so whatever things we are seeing here are simple nowhere any complex actually there is no place here so i'll just uh, continue this uh, here the next step after equation three now this is the, almost the entire derivation next step we'll get the answer so what is the internal resistance now substituting this in equation three so emf is what from equation 1 l1 phi and v term is what here v term equation 2 which is what l2 phi minus l2 phi divided by again v term it is l2 phi that is in the brackets just see equation 3 and outside external resistance r is there so now 5 is common factor it can be cancelled so directly i can cancel this phi numerator phi can be taken common denominator phi is there both numerator 5 and denominator 5 will get cancelled. So, directly here itself it can be cancelled. So, I will not show the cancellation because already 5 looks like one cancelled line like it will be confusing. So, I will not cancel. Directly I will write. Therefore, internal resistance is equal to L1 minus L2 divided by L2 into 5. L2 into that is capital R. That is the external resistance. That is what we are getting finally. The internal resistance in terms of the two balancing lengths that is l1 and l2 so this formula is the very 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 important formula using which we can find out the internal resistance of the cell in terms of the two balancing lengths l1 and l2 and the external resistance now the formula this formula is not different much different from equation 3 so this we have just now we have seen how to remember this equation so small r is a small fraction into capital r external resistance capital r so the small fraction is emf minus v term so in play emf is nothing but it's proportional to l1 equation 1 and v term is proportional to l2 from the equation 2 just now we have seen so in place of emf l1 in place of v term l2 again denominator v term l2 that's the formula this is a simple way to remember so this is a completion of the derivation that is completion of the determination of the internal resistance so the entire experiment is very simple so there are two questions here this is a very big topic potentiometer two essay answers are involved here First essay answer is the comparison of EMS. Second essay answer is the internal. Both are separate questions. Any one only will be given in the exam. Any one. But for both of them, common is the working principle. So, while writing each, whether it's comparison of EMS or the internal resistance, firstly, working principle commonly should be written. I'll just show this clearly in the running notes. So, next frame, I'll directly put the entire running notes completed. So, it's same as the derivation which you have seen. The only thing is in between the derivation steps, let some one paragraph consisting of three lines or four lines matter should be written. So everything I will put in the next frame. Okay. Just see here the running notes. It is very simple. So this is the running notes. Ready actually I already prepared the running notes. Same as uh, directly I prepared and showing so to save the time. So there are four pages here, but each page when you are writing. There are two experiments here, already I said, two experiments are involved here. 
first is the comparison of cms and determinants for both the common thing is what the working principle construction and working principle is a common thing so it should be written first and then comparison should be written or if determination of internal resistance is given first the working principle and then the internal resistance all that i have shown here in the running notes itself so here there is nothing to skip off here everything in shortest possible manner i have given no big explanation so first definition of potentiometer next principle of potentiometer next the uh, construction and working principle this also mainly diagram explanation is very little you see not much big explanation so that is the first page so page 1 i have shown so directly at the, uh, no, this is most probably 70th minute i think 70th minute 70th or 71st minute so four pages uh, you just uh, take the snapshot of each page so first page you see here observe the right hand right hand side cursor i am moving the cursor just see in the pen form it is present now it's the vertical bar you see vertical bar is the top means top of the page i am i am just moving it down slowly this is the bottom of the page so take the snapshots one or two snapshots will be required here for the complete page top and bottom now easily running notes can be completed next second page just see the running notes so page 2 see here this continuation of the same comparison of pms so there is a working principle and then comparison of pms rough notes also i kept uh, whatever rough notes sir uh, just now i was tell telling emf and the external resistance and the internal resistance of the cell of emf here this is the diagram which i was just telling during the determination of the internal resistance same di rough diagram everything i kept as it is as during the explanation no change at all only thing is the matter one paragraph one and a half paragraphs i added between the steps so this is a comparison of ems page page number 2 just stop see the vertical bar at the top of the page slowly i'm moving it down this way this is the bottom of the page the so second page completed so all the four pages you have to take down quickly running notes within 10 15 minutes 10 minutes it can be completed those two big experiments are involved here both are very important uh, experiments for the potentiometer so page 3 so internal resistance determination is starting here top of the page observe the vertical bar now i'm moving the vertical bar down that means page is down this is the end of the page third page next finally the fourth page this is the fourth page this is the fourth page diagram and the derivation internal resistance finally given by l1 minus l2 by l2 into r that's all so quickly complete the running notes sir. quickly within 5 minutes or 10 minutes entire both the experiments can be taken comparison as well as the this just see here one small thing i want to point out so just see here so for example the second experiment of the potential determination of internal resistance firstly working principle must be written here and then the following the same way i have given this indicated this clearly for comparison of ems also so that's the thing so quickly complete the running notes i'm just again going back to the fourth page so this is the top of the fourth page and then vertical bar i'm moving down completely this is the end of the fourth page so complete the running notes quickly within 5 10 minutes and attend the before attending the next class